Nigel Farage, what are you doing here? Well, I had to come. I mean, you know, Trump, I've, I've been friendly with him for all these years and he's just survived an assassination attempt, so I thought I'd come and say hello. Did he ask you to come? Uh, there were people around him that thought it was the right thing that I came. What did you think when you heard the news, first of all? I was very upset, uh, and I'm still upset. I'm obviously pleased that my friend Donald's got away with it. Uh, only just, but he's got away with it. I thought you were giving all your time to Clacton now as its newest MP. Well, I'm allowed to come to America on a trip like this, particularly in these circumstances. I mean, I, I had planned to come originally to America and to be here for a few months, and I made a decision, no, I'm going to run for Clacton. Uh, but given the circumstances, it was right that I came. And yet, somehow, I'm not shocked by it. The, the narrative that is put out there about Trump by these liberals that oppose him is, is so nasty, is so unpleasant, uh, that I think it almost encourages this type of behaviour. Are you suggesting that the political environment is to blame for this? Because at one point you said you wouldn't be running in Clacton mm. because you wanted to give your time to the US, mm. but now you are the new Clacton MP, but are here in the US just what, two weeks after getting elected? Because yeah. this feels more exciting? No, I'm just here for a couple of days. That's it. That's it. I'll be back at the weekend. And um... Well, you can always pick out quotes. I mean, it was just a few weeks ago that, that Joe Biden said Trump must be put in the bullseye. Um... No, I mean, look, what happened on Saturday was, uh, could have been uh, the most disastrous event. But why did he need you? Well, that's a matter for, you know, his team to answer, not me. No, I mean, listen, it, it was right that I came. But there is also a mainstream uh, media narrative. Uh, and it, I'm afraid it's very, very one-sided. Uh, the BBC is a part of this. It's happening in this country. I mean, I, I've faced continual attacks for over a decade now because it's me, no one cares. Right for who? It was the right thing to do. I have friends. I don't, I don't know whether you do or not. Maybe you don't, but uh, I have friends. One of the times, one of the many times that I had a drink thrown at me, um, you know, a comedian, so-called comedian on a BBC show, says, well, why not battery acid? Um, and when they're, when they're in, uh, having a tough time, uh, it's right to go and support them. And is that the sense you've got, that he's having a tough time right now? He nearly died. Uh, we've got Mr Aronovich, who does programmes on Radio 4, who recently said that the best way for the Democrats to deal with Trump is to have him shot. Do, do you think he's having a tough time right now? He nearly died. So I do think mainstream media, I do think liberal intolerance uh, is increasingly a part of this problem. And, I and, yet, through and yet, Mr Farage, we should, we should, you're not suggesting, surely, that this is coming only from one side. If we concentrate on what's happened in America, do the yeah. Republicans also not have a responsibility in terms of creating a political environment? Many of Donald Trump's supporters have on many occasions used incredibly direct yes. language here. Oh, that's right. And look, there are extremists on both sides of the political divide. Uh, and if they're mere supporters, it, that's a very difficult thing for political parties, apart from condemning it, to deal with. What I'm saying is there is a narrative that has been built up for many, many years. Uh, and I see it myself. I mean, people hate me. And do you think that's changed him? Do you think... I mean, you must have spoken to him if you're well, a good friend. I think that he's obviously very thoughtful about what happened. Um, not because of what I've said, not because of what I've done, but, but because of things that are broadcast uh, about me on, you know, uh, radio stations, uh, TV channels, uh, regulated by Ofcom or the BBC itself. Just tell us one thing. Have you seen Liz Truss here? No. But I do think, I'm sorry, but I do think mainstream media has a lot to do with this. What impact do you think that this might have, though, on the presidential race in America? Well, the problem is that, you know, Trump lives and breathes by big rallies. So I've been to maybe a dozen of them myself, you know, sometimes 10,000 people, sometimes 50,000 people. It's the, it's the energy that's generated from those events uh, that spreads out through communities and gets him his vote. Now, security, secret service is always incredibly strict, but if someone's got a high velocity rifle, I think in this case, the guy was about 150 yards away, but I mean, you know, a rifle like that can be very effective and very accurate up to a thousand yards. So it's difficult to see, you know, does Trump go on doing what he's always done? And I face this in the general election. Uh, the second or third day of the campaign, about a thousand days, I was told, by the police, do not get off the bus or you'll be there. And it was. And it's the same for Trump. And it's the same for Trump. And the bus said, so, you know, the problem is, how did you? Yeah, I was trying to get away.
Click here for Julia Haightley Brewer interviewing ex-Tory MP Miriam Cates. 